Hello everyone and welcome to this video learning, video learning program. Can you learn through this video? Yes, all of us can, you can also. You must be wondering why we are doing this video learning. Information and communication technology has revolutionized our lives. We go for our grocery shopping, we go for our ticketing, whether air ticket or railway ticket, we go uh, for our purchase of different things including the vegetable and our clothes and so on and so forth. All of these things we are doing online. So in education, can it be done? Will it be effective? Will be, the students will be able to learn? many questions. Yes, we can do it and that is what uh, through this video you will be able to learn and that is ICT information and communication technology in learning. After watching this video you will be able to describe the meaning of information and communication technology. Secondly, you will be able to identify the various tools. Thirdly, you will be able to use the different tools of ICT in learning. And lastly, integrate the tools in classroom activities. Let us take an example and understand a different situation. Then what we keep doing as teachers in the classrooms. Suppose, suppose you take the topic in the classroom, one of the lessons is on photosynthesis. I am sure this unit, this subject or this lesson is at 6th, 7th, I am not sure about the 8th class. Can you show the video on photosynthesis to your students in the beginning of the lesson? Which means, suppose I want to start the lesson from today and the lesson on photosynthesis will be covered in the next 4 to 5 periods and in the beginning itself. I show a video on photosynthesis to my students. Will be a, they able to learn it? I am sure and I think all of you, you will be also be sure that students will be able to learn from the video. Now, second important point here is the rest of the periods, the teacher has all the time to make students learn, research, do the project work, do cooperative learning, do collaborative learning on photosynthesis. Now see the difference. First, the whole lesson is covered in just 20 to 25 minutes of a video. The rest of the time is available for the teacher to do what she or he thinks so that students learn. And that is the power of the information and communication technology. Now let us learn more on ICT and learning. The first point which is what is the definition of ICT? Many a times the first concept in anything we see the definition of that. So here we begin with what is the definition of information and communication technology? There are several, several available in the textbooks maybe in the encyclopedias, maybe on various websites and other resources. But here on the screen which shows is a diverse set of 
technological tools and resources used to communicate, to create, disseminate, store and manage information is a definition of ICT. And this definition as you see on the screen is UNDP's definition and I have quoted from there. And there can be several definitions. I am sure you can make, you can create your own definition of information communication technology and there are several available also. But the point here if you see on the screen says these are the technological tools and those are diverse which are used to communicate, create, disseminate, store and manage what? Information and that is what ICT means all about. And if we say what are the components of information and communication technology, simply we can say it is of three words information, communication, third technology. But let us see what are the other components. So, it is information and communication infrastructure. Second is information technology and third what we say is the communication technology. So, all the definitions actually of ICT which we read from various sources consist of these three components. Now, coming to what are the various technologies? I need not explain this because all of you, you are aware of it and if you see it on your screens right from printed material, textbooks to your emails to your mobile phones to your satellite learning through your computers to your worldwide web and many more. Here it is just listed a few examples of these technologies. Now coming to what are the various tools of ICT? See it on the picture. Few I have written. Can you guess what are these? These are categorized, classified into three tools. Firstly, audio, which you will see, the tapes, the CDs. Earlier, which we used to have songs on these CDs. Simply that. But it began with the radio. From radio, it moved on to these CDs. I think now, if we see computers, they do not have even the CD drive because things have changed. ICT has changed. But actually, it is an important tool of audio, is an important tool of ICT. Second is video. Lots of these we use it in our day to day life. Just simply I give, give an example, you get so many videos on your WhatsApp messages. You have YouTube, you have TeacherTube, you have Khan Academy, you have lots of your uh, videos on your MOOCs and so on. And lastly, audio visual which is a combination of audio and video. So, these are basically three tools of ICT which are categorized as audio, video and audio visual. Now, next is how do these tools, what is the combination of these tools? It is not one single technology. It is a combination of hardware, Hardware, if we say a computer, computer hardware plus a software. You see in the computer, you get Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or Excel and many more. That is just one I have given you as an example plus your 
multimedia and the delivery system that consists of all the ICT tools. Now, coming to the next part of our learning is what is the role of ICT? There is the first important role of ICT is the nature of the content. What do we mean by the nature of the content? The content differs from subject to subject, within the subject also it differs, that is what it calls the nature of the content. Some concepts within that content needs explanation, some concepts have to be explained through demonstration, certain other concepts has to be explained through practicals and that is what it is called the nature of the content. And second important point where the ICT plays a role is the learning styles of the learners. I am sure all of you, you know what do, what do we mean by learning styles. Each one of us has a different learning style. Some of you listen and then learn, some of us unless and until we do not do it with our own hands or experience it, we do not learn. Some of us we need audio as well as something to see along with it, we do not learn. Some of us we learn best through videos, some of us we learn best through by reading a textbook. So, these are the various learning styles of each one of us. So, how ICT can be used, what role it will play in our classrooms depends upon the two components, content and the learning styles. Coming to what are the classifications of these tools? Firstly, it is informative tools. Secondly, situating tools. Third, constructive tools. And the last is the communicative tools. So, if you see the learning material is with you, those learning books are with you, you will see in the chapter that the classifications of tools is done as informative, situating, constructive and communicative. What is informative tools? What are those informative tools and what do they do? The informative tools they are the textual material, the textbooks rather simple if we say the textbooks, in the encyclopedias, the learning material and what do they do? They collect information. How do these help us? For collecting information. Secondly, the important of these informative tools are that no real life experiences are given. If you see a textbook, it will completely describe a field visit, but I will not get a life experience, the students will not get an experience that how to go to a bank, what happens in a bank. That is a life real experience, but the textbook will describe the whole lot of banking functions, what is a bank, what does it do and so on. So, informative tools gives a abstract information of the concept or the content. Second is the situating tools. Situating tools are the direct experience through observation or practice. So, if you see all your uh, these games, simulation games, which you the students, the younger generation, they go and play in, in those. Uh, uh, if you go to the market or a mall or to, to, to those, so simulation games are there. So, situating tools gives 
nearly a direct experience, not the exact experience, but a direct experience through observation or through practice. The third is the constructive tools. What are those tools and what do they do? Through these tools, you construct, you manipulate, you visualize your own knowledge. And what are these tools? All your mind tools like your databases, your spreadsheets, your networking programs, all these are the constructive tools. The next and the last is the communicative tools. If you see it on your screens, there are two, three pictures. And what are these communicating tools? As the name suggests, that they pass information. It is for communication. And the best example is email. We write email morning, evening, mid midnight, and the message is received to the other person within seconds. So, all your emails, your electronic bulletin boards, your chats, teleconferencings and electronic whiteboards are placed under the communicative tools. If you see it again on the screen, the slide shows a picture of an electronic bulletin board. You will go to a railway station, if you go to the airports, you will see all those electronic bulletin boards where there is a communication that at, if the train is late, if the flight is rate, late or it is on time, at which terminal and so on. So, those are all called electronic bulletin boards where communication is happening. Before we go to the next part of our learning was identify different tools of ICT that you can use in your classroom. I am sure working in the groups, you can find out many more which are not listed in the video which you have not learnt through this video. Identify and discuss with your peer group. Now, let us move to the next part that how these tools can be used in the teaching and the learning process. First important point which we want to highlight and it is given in your learning material is in the pedagogies. I need not explain to you as educators, as teacher educators that what is pedagogy. All of you, you know what is pedagogy. So, how ICT tools helps in the pedagogy. A, it guides the learners by using ICT. Secondly, ICT during phases of pedagogical processes helps in learning. Now, you will see what are the different phases. Phases of a learning right from your learning objective, learning outcome to your concepts, to your activities, to your media, to your assessment and all these are the pedagogical processes of teaching learning. And ICT can be used at all the phases or at any of the phases and that is what we say the use of ICT in the pedagogy. Next is ICT motivates the students and encourages interaction. Very important. Fourth is ICT guide the students learning and lastly it motivates the students and encourages interaction which is I think similar to what the third point says. Second point, how it helps in the teaching learning process is in collaboration. How? 
it helps among the students, it helps between student teacher. You must have seen when students you give an assignment to your learners, they go discuss among themselves by using a computer. They go to any website and they discuss it. So, what they are doing is they are working, they are learning in collaboration. Second is between student and teacher. I am sure many of the times you must have taken a computer to your classroom to show any video or to project it on the screen and then you interact with your students. So, in collaboration ICT is used. Some of the other examples is your social networking like your wiki, your Yahoo groups, your Google groups, your blog, your Facebook, your Twitter and MySpace. I am sure all of you, you know how much you are on the Facebook and every time once you go out or you meet another friend or you do something different, you go and immediately put it on your Facebook. So, that is what it is a tool which is used for the collaboration. The third point where ICT tools are being used is in the assessment. How? We know in regular teaching learning process, we assess our learner in between and we assess our learners at the end of the year. So, what you are doing basically, you are assessing the learner's performance. So, performance can be assessed during the course or performance can be assessed after the course. How an ICT can help it by maintaining e-portfolios. E-portfolios if you see is majority of the times, um, I think if I give an example of uh, fashion designing, what do they do? They create their design and make a portfolio of there. And then at the end of the year or six months or three months, they show it to a jury. Those are called e-portfolios. They can be hard or they can be on your computer, kept it on your computer. Several times you do your online examinations. You take a test online and you take a printout and you are able to, the teacher is able to assess. So, ICT tools can be used are being used in the assessment and that is an important component of the teaching learning. Assessment is an important component. Now, can we just little go in detail that how it is important, what are the principles of it? The first is flexibility. Again, all of you, you know, what do we mean by flexibility? like NIOS examinations held twice in a year, but NIOS also offers on demand examination. What does that mean? It means it has flexibility. Whenever I am ready, I as a learner, I am ready to appear or give or get it assessed. I can go and give an online exam and that is what flexibility means. So, there is no particular date, month where I can go and can be assessed. Second important point is responsibility of students for their own learning. Third important point is there are variety of assessment instruments. If you go and see check on the internet, you will find there are several, several when you are doing online assessment, you can have your multiple choice questions, you can have true false, you can have fill in the blanks, you can have match the following and so on. So, what is happening through ICT? There are variety of assessment instruments being used. Next is 
authenticity of the assessment. Why we say authenticity? Authenticity means it is correct because it goes through several processes and that is why we say assessment through ICT is very authentic. And the last point which is it means student as an active participant. Using ICT students become active in the assessment process. Make groups, do this exercise and the exercises describe the advantages of the tools of ICT used in the process of assessment. You can discuss, you can find out what are the tools available. From your experience also you can write it down if any ICT tools has been used by any one of you in the process of assessment. Write it down, discuss it among yourselves with your peer groups that will be helping you in finding out that what are the tools of ICT. Coming to the next part of our learning is how ICT is used in teaching learning processes. If you see it on your screen there are four pictures and the picture will give you an idea what are the various ICT tools in the learning process. I need not get into the detail of this picture. Next important point is how do you integrate ICT in your teaching learning process? Very, very important because several studies show that ICT has been provided by the schools, ICT has been provided by the government, but schools are not using, colleges are not using, universities are not using. So, one aspect is utilization. Even they utilize, how do you integrate? Integration of ICT in our teaching learning is a very, very important aspect and we need to learn where to integrate, what to integrate, how to integrate, all these things are important. But they are very challenging, challenging for the teacher because in physics one can use a video. If you show the same concept through mobile, it is challenging. Same concept if you show through a PowerPoint, again it is different, the learning is different. So, to take a decision of how to integrate, what to integrate, that is challenging and that is what the teacher's role of learning the various ICT tools, how to integrate is important. Second is how and when to integrate. As I said in the beginning, in the very first class you can integrate ICT by showing the whole lesson through a video. So, what does that mean? That syllabus or that lesson is covered in 20 minutes or 25 minutes and then you use certain other sorts of ICT tools so that the students they collaborate, cooperate. That is what the challenge is how and when to integrate. Stages of integration, the next concept which we should know. So, the first stage what we say is need to discover the tools and the function what are the various tools available to a teacher? Suppose it is a remote classroom and there is no electricity, can you use a computer? Yes, you can say through battery we can do it, fine. That is what I mean, where the tool is available. Second important point is how to use the tool. Many times we have seen the teacher 
just puts the television program and walks out of the classroom. Is it the way to use the tool? No. So second point of integration of ICT tool is the use of the tool. Third is when to use the tool. Beginning, middle, at the end is the learning situation is transformed with the use of tool. So how it is transformed, that is important point. And these integration of ICT tools depends upon two models. One is called the Assure model, another is the ICARE model. What is Assure model? If you say, see, A stands for Analyze Learner, S stands for State Objectives, Select Methods, Media and Materials, Utilize these media, Require Learner Participation and last is Evaluation. The ICAR model says from introduction and if you see what ICARE means, I means introduction, connect, activity, reflect and end. So, your ICT integration depends upon these two models and there are several other models, but in the learning material we have emphasized these two models. Coming to the end of our learning, what did you learn? Firstly, we learned ICTs can be divided into two components. Secondly, ICT tools may be in the form of audio, visual and audio visual. Thirdly, ICT tools can be classified into four categories, informative tools, situating tools, constructive tools and communicative tools. With this, we come to end of this video lesson. I am sure all of you, you must have learned through videos. So, if you can learn it, our students can also learn if we prepare these video lectures, video lessons and show it to them.